Welcome to Real vs. Ideal Gas. As you may guess from the title of this lesson, we're going to be talking about what the difference is between a real gas and what we call an ideal gas. We're also going to be looking at what conditions a real gas does not behave ideally or does not behave like an ideal gas. So first of all, what's the difference between a real gas and an ideal gas? Everything we've talked about so far about gas laws and the kinetic molecular theory has been based on certain assumptions. And we outlined some of those assumptions when we talked about kinetic molecular theory. But the assumptions that kinetic molecular theory makes and that some of these gas laws are based off of, we know those assumptions aren't true. But we use them anyway, and we call it an ideal gas. So an ideal gas is based off assumptions. And it's important to point this out that the assumptions we know are not true. One of the things that comes out as a result of this is that the relationship between PV and T, this ratio that we said was constant for a fixed amount of gas, turns out it's not constant for a real gas. That means in reality, the pressure and volume and temperature of a gas do not have a constant ratio. The ratio can change if the pressure or temperature or volume changes. So why is it okay to use the ideal gas assumptions in the first place if we know that real gases don't really behave like that? Well, as it turns out, at STP, okay, a real gas does behave very similar to an ideal gas. So a real gas is kind of equal to an ideal gas. So it's a pretty good approximation with these assumptions. And that's why we use the ideal gas assumptions in kinetic molecular theory and the ideal gas law, as well as all the other gas laws. So if at STP this is an okay thing to do, when does this start to fall apart? Well, real gases behave differently at low temperatures and high pressures. These two conditions, low temperature and high pressure, I don't need to have both. If even one of these things happens, this similarity between real and ideal starts to fall apart. And we see that real gases behave differently. Now this differently means different from ideal. The real gases behave differently than ideal gases when either the temperature is low or the pressure is very high or both. And there's two reasons why it falls apart in these cases. There's two reasons why the behavior of real gases deviates from the behavior of an ideal gas at these conditions. The first reason, reason A, is that gases in reality have a non-zero volume. Whereas in the kinetic molecular theory, we assumed that all gases, the volume was negligible or zero. The second reason, reason B, is that the kinetic molecular theory says that there are no intermolecular attractions. But intermolecular attractions or intermolecular forces definitely exist. We're going to take a closer look at these two cases. First, let's see what happens when you have high pressure. Here we have a molecule in the middle of this container. You can see it's surrounded by a lot of space. And in relation to the volume of the container, the volume of the molecule is practically zero. So this is ideal gas. This is an assumption that the kinetic molecular theory makes that this molecule is so small compared to this container that it's practically zero. Now if we apply high pressure to this container or to this system, we're going to see it change so that the size of the container has now shrunk. The overall volume has collapsed in because the pressure is pushing everything in. And now you can see that the volume of the molecule, which has not changed, is no longer negligible. It has a very real volume compared to the volume of the container. The spacing between it and the walls is now not trivial. So that assumption that the volume of a gas is negligible has less meaning when you go under high pressure and the spacing between the molecules in each other and the molecules in the walls of the container shrink. So at high pressure, real gases have more volume than an ideal gas should have. Now let's look at the second case of low temperature. This one's a little trickier to describe, but if we look at an ideal gas on the left and compare it to a real gas on the right, we'll start to see the role of intermolecular attractions. In an ideal gas, we know that the molecule should be moving in random straight line motions, such as this. However, in a real gas, particularly at low temperatures, so at low temperatures, molecules don't have the energy to just fly right past each other. At low temperatures, they're moving much more slowly. 
so they're more subject to intermolecular attractions. So let's see what happens. We're in the same molecule set up in the real gases. And some are moving. They're all going to be moving much slower. If we look at these two molecules right here, as this one starts to move, and this one starts to move, they're going to come close to each other. When they come close to each other, there's going to be some attraction here. There's going to be some attraction between them. And that's going to change their course. Instead of continuing straight, the molecules are going to deviate. And they're going to start moving in a different direction. So the fact that intermolecular attractions prevent straight line motion, particularly at low temperatures, means that it's going to take slightly longer than you would expect for a molecule to reach the walls of the container for a collision. And those collisions generate pressure. So because of the presence of intermolecular attractions, we see less pressure than we would expect to see because it's taking the molecules a little bit longer to reach the walls of the container and cause a collision. When molecules are moving slowly, such as at low temperature, low kinetic energy, they're moving slowly. When those molecules are moving slowly, they're more susceptible to having their course changed, like in this example here, they're more susceptible to this kind of intermolecular attraction than if they were just whizzing past each other at high speed. So we see this observation that real gases have less pressure than we would expect at this condition of very low temperatures. That wraps up our lesson on real versus ideal gases. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.